According to the Gazan Ministry of Health, 7,326 people have so far been killed since Israel began its assault on Gaza. Over 3,000 of them are children. But as those numbers pile up, the West has a new strategy. Cast doubt on them. Joe Biden was asked about the Gazan death toll at a recent press conference. If I may very quickly, in the 18 days since Hamas Hamas killed 1,400 Israelis, the Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Ministry says Israeli forces have killed over 6,000 Palestinians, including 2,700 children. You've previously asked Netanyahu to minimize civilian casualties. Do these numbers say to you that he is ignoring that message? What they say to me is I have no notion that the Palestinians are telling the truth about how many people are killed. I'm sure innocents have been killed. And it's the price of waging a war. I think we should be incredibly careful. I think not we, the Israelis should be incredibly careful to be sure that they're focusing on going after the folks that are the pro- pro- propagating this war against Israel. And, uh, and it's against their interest when that doesn't happen. But I have no confidence in the number that the Palestinians are using. It was quite a big claim, and a journalist asked a spokesperson from Biden's National Security Council um, to, to back them up. The president yesterday, John, said he has no confidence in the death toll numbers presented by the Palestinians yes. in Gaza. What's he basing that on? How did he reach this conclusion? Well, we all know that the Gazan Ministry of Health is just a, a, a front for Hamas. It's, a, it's run by Hamas, a terrorist organization. Um, I've said it myself up here. We can't take anything coming out of Hamas including the so-called Ministry of Health, at face value. So-called Ministry of Health is just such a horrific way to talk about a health system which is collapsing under, under bombardment, right? Um, and as you saw there, Joe Biden made quite a big claim. We can't trust what Gazan officials tell us about any death counts. But his spokesperson there asked, what's your justification for saying this? He couldn't back it up at all beyond saying, Hamas are terrorists, these guys are bad, right? That's, that's the evidence. That's all the evidence they have for casting these aspersions. Now, what do I think about this? Well, on the one hand, I do think it's important and and, and fair to say that we shouldn't take as gospel the claims made by either side in a war. I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think it should be taboo to say um, it's in the interests of Hamas to deflate the Gazan or to inflate, sorry, the Gazan death toll. But if we do that, we should be consistent because exactly the same incentives would apply to Israel. It's also in their interest to inflate their death toll and deflate the Gazan death toll. Yet Biden isn't showing much skepticism to the claims Israel are making. Remember this. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. I never thought I'd ever... Anyway... Joe Biden's team had to confirm after that speech that Biden had not, in fact, seen photos of beheaded babies and was instead making that claim purely based on Israeli media reports. So we have inconsistency in how Biden treats information from both sides. But what do we know about the nature of the death counts provided by the Gazan Ministry of Health? Now, this is from a report from the Associated Press. The ministry is the only official source for Gaza casualties. Israel has sealed Gaza's borders, barring foreign journalists and humanitarian workers. The AP is among a small number of international news organizations with teams in Gaza. While those journalists cannot do a comprehensive count, they viewed large numbers of bodies at the sites of airstrikes, morgues and funerals. The United Nations and other international institutions and experts, as well as Palestinian authorities in the West Bank, rivals of Hamas, say the Gaza ministry has long made a good faith effort to account for the dead under the most difficult conditions. We've also got a quote from Michael Ryan of the World Health Organization's Health Emergencies Program. So he said this, The numbers may not be perfectly accurate on a minute-to-minute basis, but they largely reflect the level of death and injury. And the Associated Press also said that in previous wars, the ministry's counts have held up to UN scrutiny, independent investigations, and even Israel's tallies. So the Gazan Health Ministry, despite being overseen by evil terrorists, has a record of being accurate on this front. And Human Rights Watch have also given an interesting opinion on this topic. Their director for Israel and Palestine said, we have been monitoring human rights abuses in the Gaza Strip for three decades, including several rounds of hostilities. We've generally found the data that comes out of the Ministry of Health to be reliable. 
when we have done our own independent investigations around particular strikes and we've compared those figures against those from the health ministry, there haven't been major deviations. Their numbers generally are consistent with what we're seeing on the ground in recent days. There have been hundreds of airstrikes per day in one of the most densely populated areas of the world. We've looked at satellite imagery. We've seen the number of buildings and the numbers that are coming out are in line with what we would expect with what we're seeing on the ground. So you put all those things together and we're quite confident in the overall casualty numbers. So the record of the Gaza Health Ministry, which is staffed by doctors, not politicians, by the way, it's not just a front organisation, and their record has historically been strong. So normally when they say a number, it turns out that other investigations agree with that. Also, the number of casualties they cite is in line with what we can independently verify, namely the number of buildings that have been flattened. But that hasn't stopped Western pundits running with the smear. Philip Ingram is a former British intelligence officer, now military analyst. The Gaza Ministry of Health has turned around and said that there's 640, sorry, 6,546 people have died. 62% are women or children. Mm -hmm. Now, that Gaza Ministry of Health is Hamas. Mm -hmm. They are, it's in their interest to exaggerate the numbers and exaggerate the numbers quite a lot. But we find the international aid agencies are quoting those figures as if they were your gospel truth. Mm -hmm. Um, It it suits international aid agencies to have large numbers because that means that people will donate more money to them. So we just have to take all the figures that are coming out with a pinch of salt. We do, but I mean, huge numbers are still dying, right? But it's just, you you, you think that they may well be inflated. I think think they'll be inflated by quite a lot. There There are civilians dying in this because Hamas are using them as, as human shields in many ways. And you know, that, that's you know, absolutely horrible. I do know that the Israelis are taking you know, every care they can to try and reduce those numbers because they know that this is not good for them politically on the international stage. It was just lie after lie after lie, wasn't it? This idea, well, one, he's just saying it's just a front for Hamas. Now, it's not. I mean, anyone who's written about this, you can read this in the AP, Reuters, Guardian. What they say is that actually the Gazan Health Ministry, yes, it does fall under... Hamas control because they are in control of the strip, but also it has many bureaucrats who were there when Fatah were in control of of Gaza. And it's often, you know, in touch with the UN and various international agencies. And by the way, Gaza does have a hospital system that actually needs to work, right? So so, uh, this is an organization which governs a region. It's not just making up numbers willy-nilly because it doesn't just do propaganda, right? And then to just say, oh, I'm I'm sure some people have been killed, but that's probably just because they're human shields. I mean, we started this program speaking to someone who has had 20 of their family members killed in a building, which was outside the zone, which Israel told people to evacuate a family home, and now 20 of them are are dead, right? Is he saying, oh, they were just human shields? That's Hamas's fault. And we were told that there is no military target there, right? They weren't human shields. They were innocent civilians who were bombed by one of the most powerful militaries in the world, right? I just found that whole analysis there on Sky News just quite sickening, I have to say. To try and counter um, their Western doubters, the Gazan Health Ministry has now gone even further than in previous wars. Officials have released the names of 6,747 people they say were killed in Israeli strikes. The detailed list includes ages, genders, and ID numbers. And that's a lot more information than we've been provided about the 1,400 people Israel says were killed in the Hamas attacks on the 7th of October. So far, the names of 902 victims have been provided. Again, that doesn't mean only 902 people were killed, but I think it's important we're consistent here. I do worry when sort of people say it should be absolute taboo to question the numbers on either side. I mean, I know I've been questioning lots of of what the IDF has had to say over the past few weeks. But it does seem to me that, you know, from presidents to pundits on television, Palestinians are being forced to meet a much higher burden of proof than the Israelis when it comes to people being killed. I mean, they absolutely are. And as you pointed out, this mistrust of the numbers that are coming up that are coming out of the Gazan Ministry of Health that's something that's relatively new in previous assaults on Gaza operation cast lead what you saw in 2021 you haven't had i think this all out assault on every piece of information that comes out of Gaza and i think the reason why that's changed is that the scale has changed we're seeing a level of destruction being waged by Israel which is simply not 
comparable with anything that's happened before. And you have this language being used quite openly by the IDF of we're going for damage, not precision. So when you have a large scale aerial aerial bombardment, you know you are going to kill very, very many civilians and you want to do it with strong support from Western governments. Well, of course you have to cast doubt on the numbers which are coming out of Gaza because that's part and parcel of the project of delegitimization and dehumanization of Palestinian life. Um, their human shields, their terrorists, even when they die, they're not really dead. Um, that kind of strategy has been a core tenet of Israeli Hasbara, the kind of PR strategy, which is often quite diffuse. It's not just from one central agency, and it's about flooding communications networks with Israeli talking points and delegitimizing and casting doubt on any aspect of the Palestinian narrative. So this um, sort of most recent turn, where you're seeing President Biden himself saying, you know, the Hamas controlled, I've got no notion that the Palestinians are being honest with their numbers of deaths. That is a coup for Israeli Hasbara because it is the validation of a meme which has long been a part of Israeli talking point. And this meme is the conspiracy theory of Pallywood. So what Pallywood supposedly is, is the large scale and organized fabrication of videos and photographs which show images of human rights abuses, human suffering, deaths, injuries, and that kind of thing. And so you'll often see it um, online, which is, you know, when you have people sharing videos, for instance, of a uh, dead child being pulled from the rubble or um, abuses of human rights in the West Bank, you will have pro Israeli accounts saying, oh, look, this is just Pallywood. You know, give them the Oscar. What a performance. And, and the reason why I think. Um, there is such a such an effort to say this isn't happening, this is all fake. It's got something to do with the very particular way in which Israel justifies its violence against Palestinians. Israel has the monopoly on suffering. Israel is the victim. And the reason why Israel presents itself that way, it's not simply to do with Hamas rockets being fired on Israeli civilian areas. It's about connecting the state of Israel and the sort of soul of Israel to centuries of Jewish persecution. So it's about drawing legitimacy, the political cover for violence from having been a victim for so long. It's about having that monopoly on suffering. So of course, if there's another group that's suffering, if there's a group that is suffering because of the policies and activities of the world's only Jewish state, that is a fundamental threat to the way in which Israel justifies its ongoing expansion of settlements, justifies the ongoing bombardment of Gaza, justifies the system of apartheid, which governs the lives of Palestinians from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea. And that's why it is so critical to them to cast doubt on anything that comes out of a Palestinian's mouth. No, I think that's absolutely right. And I, I suppose just to reiterate, because I mean, I have been, I've had lots of people sort of really haranguing me because I've said that we should want verification of the claims that the IDF are making. They're saying, you're a conspiracy theorist. I keep getting called a Holocaust denier because I, I, I dare to, to doubt some of the claims they make without verification. And I suppose people could say to me, well, well, now you're just accepting what the Gaza Health Ministry is saying. Well, for one, we do normally report it as according to the Gaza Health Ministry. And I think as we've demonstrated, the historical record suggests that it does tend to be accurate what the Gaza Health Ministry says, at least in terms of numbers of, of people who have died. And the other thing I was thinking about this is that when it comes to verification, obviously, there are going to be some things where it's difficult to verify. It's difficult for a health agency to, to verify. So for example, when it comes to numbers of deaths, I can see why it might take a long time to identify people who are killed in an airstrike or in an attack. It might also be the case um, that a government or public bodies want to make sure there's time to inform 
friends and family before they go to the media and say, this is the list of names. So I, I think there, are, there will be many times in, in war where we will have to sort of accept a level of verification which seems reasonable at that period of time. I do think, though, in the case of the Israelis, people have been accepting things when verification would be easy but still has not been provided. And I have an example for you, which is this tweet from the Israeli Defense Forces, so the IDF. It says this, This would have been a photo of a lifeless pregnant woman next to her beheaded unborn baby cut out of her belly by Hamas terrorists. Due to this platform's guidelines, we can't show you that. And as you can see, this tweet, which has this horrific, horrific claim, I can't imagine you know, an image more, more disgusting, more outrageous than what they're describing there. That's been viewed 13.5 million times. It's had 24,000 retweet. So that's gone really far and wide. And I suppose what I would say to that, and I tweeted this at the time, actually, and a lot of people attacked me for it, is if this picture exists, there is no reason why you can't show that. Don't show it to us. Don't show it to the public, right? I, I'm not saying they should have tweeted the image, but you can show that to a specialist journalist at Reuters. You can show that to a specialist journalist at the Associated Press. There is no reason why they wouldn't see that. So when I see these claims, this photo exists, but you can't see it. Not me personally. The media can't see it. The media can't independently verify it. That, to me, raises questions. As I say, I don't think we have to be able to verify every claim which is made to report it when it comes to the number of deaths. You know, I, I'm not saying because Israel has only named 902 people, that means that 1,400 people didn't die, right? It, it might be that it's taking time to identify people or to, to tell family members. I don't know. But if you've got a state agency which is one of the participants in this war, You've got Hamas on one side, you've got the Israeli government on the other, and you've got lots of, you know, I don't think it's a war against Hamas, I think it's a war against the Palestinian people, but when it comes to, you know, the numbers being released, etc. Um, you've got the Palestinian side, you've got the Israeli side. I think it's perfectly reasonable to, to scrutinize both of them. They do both have interests involved here. When you're fighting a physical war, you tend to also fight an information war. But sometimes you're going to have to accept that, you know, the, the standard of proof might have to be lowered somewhat because you're in a war. If it's a photo, though, if the claim being made by the IDF is we have this photo, but we're not going to show you because it, you know, it doesn't fit the, the guidelines of Twitter. Like, obviously, it doesn't fit the guidelines on Twitter. Show Reuters. Show Associated Press. And in situations like that, until easily providable verification has been provided, I won't believe it. And then, you know, to full circle, go back to Joe Biden, right? Joe Biden literally stood up in front of the world and said he'd seen photographs of beheaded babies. And it wasn't true right? So Western commentators, the standard of proof they are demanding of the Gazans and the standard of proof they are demanding of the Israelis, when it comes to the Gazans, they're picking thousands of people out of rubble and they're expecting the names of everyone. When it comes to the Israelis, the Israelis are telling them they've got a photograph, but we won't show you it, right? So it, it seems to me just an unbelievable level of inconsistency when it comes to the scrutiny put on the Israeli claims made and the Palestinian claims made. And I think that's incredibly un healthy and it needs to change.